Well, hello friends and welcome to another Ask Zach. I hope you're doing well. Today we're going to talk about guitar picks. It's the fastest way to change the tone and feel and the way you interact with the guitar. And uh, so I'm going to kind of talk about my pick journey through the years from, I guess, 1985 to uh, 2022. That's how long I've been uh, playing the guitar. So, yeah. And, uh, and on the way, just I hope you'll get the just the importance of picks. And it can't be, you know, overstated. Just it's such an inexpensive way. Even like some crazy expensive pick, like people, you know, guffaw over like a blue chip pick, which I, I have and have used, that's like 35, 40 bucks. It's like still, these picks, you know, they make a big difference in the way you interact with the guitar. And it just comes down to whether you like it or not. All right. So uh, as always, I really appreciate you guys uh, supporting the show. Uh, if you've been enjoying the show, please subscribe. Uh, to support the show, there's multiple ways. There's tip jar information in the description. You can go to askzack.com and you can find merch like this. Uh, it's a sickness shirt, which uh, guitar playing and gear is a sickness. Or you can uh, you can find out about Friends of Ask Zach, which is a way to support the channel on a monthly basis. And uh, you actually get some Ask Zach guitar picks from me. And you get to see the episodes early without commercials. All right, so let's just dive in. Again, uh, you know, learning to play the guitar, you know, getting into it in 1985. I uh, went to my local music store, um, which was called The Music Man in Kingsville, Texas. And uh, the guy opened up a tray of Jim Dunlop uh, nylon picks like this and you know and I, I felt through them and so I picked up like a, a dark gray and a light gray one the light gray one was a little a little more flexible a little lighter gauge and used those quite a bit you know of course I was mainly strumming and I really liked the flexibility and plus it was just that's what there was and also of course I tried you know the celluloid you know picks that would have been uh, you know that are always you know somewhat prevalent uh, enjoyed it, uh, but you know, just kind of continued to want to try some different picks. On a side note, uh, I thought the only way to use a pick was to use the point, but I found out uh, through the years that especially these nylon picks, whether it's Dunlop's version or Herco or Herdem or whoever it is, a lot of guys like to use the shoulder part of the pick so that you get this raised part and it gets a scratchy sound. And so the edge has used that. But even guys as, you know, like uh, Joe Walsh, I found out recently that Joe Walsh has used the shoulder of a Dunlop or Herco type pick for most of his career. And uh, so I thought that was just really interesting. So this is, you know, that's a sound, you know, and it gets you kind of a scratchy sound by, uh, by doing that. So anyway, so I went from, from this to the next time I was in there and wanting to try some different picks, I bought uh, this Jim Dunlop uh, Tortex pick, which I kind of liked it, but it was, it was stiffer. It didn't have the give to it, which of course it gave me a stronger and brighter tone than the nylon did. But I, I just, I wasn't sure that I liked it. And I didn't like that it just didn't have much give to it. So then I really started coming under the spell of country guitar players. And uh, specifically Ray Flack, who was playing on, you know, Ricky Skaggs records and playing on other people's records too. But, uh, you know, of course, the, he did a Starlix video. And in the video, he talks about his strings and picks. And I found out that he used these Steve Zook speed picks that were that had, were twisted on the end. And so I got some of these. And so in the same gauge and shape, so I got the little jazz size and in, in medium. And, uh, you know, of course, I mean, it was 75 cents or something like that. Uh, but it was a way for me to be like my hero because I couldn't afford a 68 Tele and a Lab Series L9 amp and a Deluxe Memory Man. So I, uh, I got, got, got these, started using them. And I found that it was nice because it did kind of hit the string uh, better. Instead of hitting it at an angle, I mean, it kind of hit it straight on because that's what the angle does. It kind of gets it into a, a fun position. These are also somewhat bright sounding picks. I didn't like the uh, the size of the pick. And so I ended up getting the uh, the full size, you know, 351 size uh, speed pick with the twist on the end. So I kept using that for a while. 
What I didn't like about this pick was, uh, you know, when I started playing a little more acoustic, like strumming acoustic, I really didn't like them for that. So, and this, this didn't help. I started taking guitar lessons with a guy named Pat Grogan, who I just spoke on the, fo on the phone with just yesterday. He, uh, he's 87 years old and still lives in the Corpus Christi area. An amazing player, an amazing teacher, and of course a finger style player. And so he tried to get me to use a thumb pick. Thumb pick, I tried so hard to get along with it, but I was already used to doing up and down strokes with the pick. And so with a thumb pick, now some guys can do up and down strokes with the thumb pick, but I was having to do down, up, down, up with the thumb pick and a finger to get up and down strokes. And I couldn't strum for the life of me, you know, with, with that. And so it just didn't take off. And so then I started, you know, you know, I was already getting into picking fingers and there I just decided I'm a flat pick guy and that's what I'm going to go with. So then I moved to Nashville going to Belmont University, and of course I was consuming all the guitar magazines I could get, and there was a, uh, John Jorgensen interviewed Reggie Young in a uh, Guitar World public publication called Country Guitar. It was only around for a couple of years, but I found that, uh, you know, and again, Reggie wasn't like a, a huge hero of mine at that point, but I liked him and I liked the stuff that he played on. And so I found out that he used a Fender Medium and he used the shoulder of the pick. So of course I started doing that and I found that it really changed the sound because it, again, it's hitting more surface area instead of the point and it just got a warmer sound. Now, of course, since then I found out that Stevie Ray Vaughan and many, many players have used the shoulder. So this wasn't like some, you know, wasn't like Reggie Young had invented this or anything like that. But I kind of started doing that and I never turned back. So from the mid 90s on, now the pick might have changed, but I have always used the shoulder of the pick. I would never used the point. So and I just found that I liked the sound of it better and it was just more pleasing. This is a little faster because there's less resistance, but I just always liked the sound. So, of course, Going on, continued to use, and I would always waffle between a Fender celluloid medium or a heavy, and I'd always just keep going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Well, then I went to work for Brad Paisley, and uh, of course, he was having picks printed up uh, by Ernie Ball, who had a, an endorsement with. He used their strings and their picks, and so, of course, you know, they were plentiful and always around, and uh, so, you know, they'd end up in my pocket, and so I'd come home, and I'd end up with some you know, Brad Paisley picks and, you know, so for many years, um, probably at least a decade, I used uh, these uh, Brad Paisley picks, which I still have a few of them and they're medium gauge made by Ernie Ball. They've got Ernie Ball's logo on the back and have his name on the front. Sometimes we would print these up that would have the name of whatever the current single was. And uh, so there's some of those out there, but uh, yeah, I use these. Uh, and just as an aside, I went to, uh, you know, because when I worked for Brad, it was in the early 2000s. So I went out and did a couple of shows with him, again, as his, as to help out his current guitar tech, just to get kind of acclimated. And uh, I, it was really interesting to find that he had switched to heavies. And so still, you know, of course, you have, this is red with uh, black writing on it and Ernie Ball, but it's it's heavy gauge. And he'd always used medium before. So I thought that was interesting, but I didn't really, I didn't really like it. Now I'm going I'm to show a pick that, uh, just for fun. So because picks have always been kind of a, a fun thing for me. Well, when my wife and I got married, uh, I of course had custom guitar picks made up. And so they say Amy and Zach, and then they have the, the date of our uh, wedding, 12707. So yeah, we just passed 15 years. All right. So, uh, then the probably the, the most recent like pick thing that that happened with me was uh, Keith Williams of Five Watt World really you know was getting into blue chip picks and also I had interviewed Red Volkart and Red was talking about how horrible how har how horrible the current supply of celluloid picks was and how they just weren't right and how they they wore horribly and they didn't sound good and blah 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 and of course I have a huge amount of respect for Red so I'm not mocking him by saying blah, blah, blah. I just, you know, 
it was kind of like I, I took it in and, and was listening to him, and he said in the interview that he was using a blue chip pick. Well, I found out how expensive they were, and so I, I, I kind of, uh, you know, was in a little shock uh, when I found out, you know, they were, you know, thirty, forty dollars. Well, Keith Williams so believed in the pick that he sent me one of his to try out, and I really liked it. So uh, then I had uh, a couple made up that even had the laser engraved Ask Zach logo on there. So, and I really like these. These are these are good picks. The problem was is that I couldn't afford to have a bunch of them because again, they're $30, $40 a piece. And I found that I just really wanted to find something that was that was close to this, that was similar, yet wasn't so expensive. And so I wouldn't feel bad about losing them. And so I, I like to have my picks, you know, in the, the little pocket on my jeans, just like most people do, or, you know, in my wallet and stuff. And I just didn't want to lose these. So I started doing some searching. And uh, what I, you know, I, I would, I went back to celluloid, regular celluloid picks. And I, and yes, I had to agree with red to a degree. I found that there was lots of different levels of quality of celluloid. So you could get a celluloid pick from one company that would that would wear well and sound good, but then you could get a celluloid pick from another company and it would immediately get, you know, uh, gashes in it and that would catch on the string and you just have to throw it away. I mean, they just didn't wear well. And so I found that the celluloid supply was really uh, uneven to, to say the least. But I just like the sound and feel of it. And I kept going in between a medium and a heavy gauge, like I said earlier. It was always the thing where the medium had too much flap, the heavy was too hard, and I just kept going back and forth. To finally, I would just keep medium and heavy picks in my pocket, and I would switch depending just on how I was feeling at that point. Well, I finally just kind of got tired of it, you know, carrying different picks, and then I, I remembered, it's like, didn't Fender make medium heavy picks at one point? And so I looked up and sure enough, they did. So it was probably back in the 60s or 70s that they did this, but they had picks that were medium heavy. They're right in between a medium and a heavy gauge pick and made from celluloid. Well, of course, at this point, it's a vintage pick and people would want money for it. You know, a, a significant amount of money, I should, I should add. Well, I, uh, from you know doing research on Fender, I knew that D'Andrea, the pick manufacturer, had made Fender's picks starting in the 50s and up until the, the 2000s. Uh, you know, and then Fender stopped getting their, their picks from them and they started getting their picks from, from overseas, from Asia. So I decided to, to look up D'Andrea and see if they had a medium heavy. Well, lo and behold, they did. So here it is. And, uh, and I got, you know, the only way I could get it was I had to get a bag of them. And so I did and I loved it. It was perfect. And so I, I made sure and I played, I played on it for a while. I played some shows with it, played it on all sorts of different instruments. I found that it worked well on acoustic and mandolin. You know, I, I usually like a, a heavier gauge with mandolin, but it could work on any instrument that I played well. It wasn't like some horrible compromise and I just loved it. And I found out they were hard to, to find. So then it was like, well, I'll just order some up and with the Ask Zach logo. So that's what I did. So I had a bunch of them made up with the Ask Zach logo. And that's, uh, and that's the pick that I've been using for the, at least the last year or so. And uh, I love it. These, uh, they wear well and uh, they feel good. And, uh, and they have enough of the, uh, you know, they, they, have, they have enough give, but yet they're hard enough. And I just think they sound good. And uh, I've been very, very happy with these. And, uh, you know, the, the hard part was that, you know, you can find medium heavy in other materials, but the problem was finding them in celluloid. And I think, uh, you know, D'Andre was the only company that did that. All right. So here's just an aside of, you know, of course, a lot of these picks, besides the medium heavy, I got because of people I was working with or guitar players that I liked or you know, whatever the, the case may be. And then I have to give, like, this is the one, like, real horror story of picks. And I, I think it's hilarious. So the pick I hate the most 
is this Jim Dunlop, Eric Johnson pick. So it says Eric Johnson, Texas on the back. And it's like, this is probably the pick I hate the most. I think it sounds, for me, it sounds God awful terrible. And I know a lot of guys like these and I have the utmost respect for Eric Johnson's playing and tone. And this just shows how you know, the, the difference in the way you dial in your rig and the way, you know, your hands and everything else come into play. Because, of course, Eric Johnson uses these picks and sounds, you know, amazing. You know, I have the utmost respect for Eric. But this is one of the worst crash and burn experiences I've ever had with trying something that one of your heroes used. So uh, I just say that as a funny aside, not certainly not as an attack against uh, Eric Johnson, because he certainly makes these works. But it's just funny. And, uh, but again, this was such a small investment. Again, you know, I don't know if it was a, a dollar or whatever it was, but I highly recommend that you, uh, you know, just if you haven't, if you haven't found a pick that you love, well, just go to a music store and pull out 20 bucks and just you know, buy a bunch of different types of picks, get different materials, different thicknesses, different shapes. You know, it's like I found out, you know, I hate jazz picks. They're just too small. I mean, I think they, you know, they're fine. Also, they kind of sound small to me, but other people make them sound great. And I like playing on the shoulder and I like celluloid and I like the medium heavy gauge. But that came from playing and experimenting from 1985 until 2022. So there you have it. All right, guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's episode and uh, my look at, at picks that I've used through the years. And I hope you'll see it as a, a vehicle for you to do your own pick experimentation and, uh, and that you'll find the pick that, uh, that, that works best for you. Because there's so much to the way you have to, you have to think about the fact that that's the way you interact with the instrument with your right hand, you know, if you're a pick player. And it's just so important to, uh, you know, it's like you can use different gauges and it will make the guitar feel like it has heavier, lighter gauge strings because of the resistance. So, uh, yeah, go out there and buy a bunch of picks. Try them out. All right, guys. Thank you so much. See you next time. Bye-bye.